Hi friends, it's Dana here. I am in South Florida visiting my family and I have been here quite a few times and I've never really taken the time to learn about what it's really like to be a Floridian or what Florida is really all about. It just was like beaches and Disneyland and you know, being hot to me. But it turns out the Everglades are a really special place and I have had the opportunity to read lots of books about the Everglades and I think this one tells a really beautiful story about, you know, the history of the Everglades and maybe what we can do to help preserve it. So here we go. Let's read it. It's a classic book called Everglades. It's by Jean Craighead George and paintings are by Wendell Minor. Here we go. The storyteller pulled the children under arching trees into a sunny water glade. He sat down and leaned toward them. I am going to tell you a story, he said. It is not a story about a person or a mythical creature. It is not even a story about an animal. The children looked at each other and waited. It's a story about a river. He swung his arms in a wide circle. This river the miraculous Everglades of Florida. My story will be different from any you have heard because this river is like no other river on earth. There is only one Everglades. The children leaned forward and he began. First, there was sunshine on a blue-green sea. It was the age of the sea seashells. The seashells formed a rock called limestone on the sea bottom. Over the eons, the sea lowered and the rock became land. The long Florida, Florida Peninsula took shape in warm, sunny waters. Purple clouds, flashing with lightning, roiled and boomed above the land. Rain gushed from the storm clouds in summer. Sun bathed the land in winter. Moss grew, then ferns, then grass and trees. The rain eroded holes in the soft limestone and filled them with water. Florida glistened with green land and blue green lakes. One was Lake Okeechobee round, deep, and as clear as window glass. Lake Okeechobee filled to its brim and spilled over. The spill became a river that seeped 100 miles down the peninsula from Lake Okeechobee to the Florida Bay. It was 50 miles wide and only six inches deep in most places. The river did not chortle and splash. It did not crash over falls and race. It was a slow river that gleamed like quicksilver. We know it today as the Everglades. Into the shallow warm river came tiny one-celled animals and plants. They lived and died and made gray green soil on the bottom of the river. Sawgrass took root in the soil. The grass prospered. When the winds blew, the sawgrass clattered like a trillion swords. Each sword was edged with cutting spines. On the larger of the larger animals, only the leathery alligator could walk unharmed among the terrible spears of the sawgrass. Around the stems of the grass scurried the young of insects and tiny crabs and snails. Little fish found these to be excellent eating. Turtles and alligators found the fish to be excellent eating. Every wild thing ate well, and there was still an enormous abundance. To the abundance came the birds. Clouds of lacy white egrets made their home in the Everglades. Every day a blizzard of wood storks dropped into the grass and dined on the snails, crabs, bugs, and fish. 
a profusion of pink flamingos hunted in the shallow mud flats. Hundreds of miles of roseate spoonbills vacuumed the ponds and shallows with their sieve-like bills. A myriad of little songbirds fluttered through the trees that grew on the islands in the river of sawgrass. Quantities of alligators roamed the grass and dug pools for their young. Into their pools came fish and turtles, herons and hingas, and billions of frogs, snakes, and snails. A multitude of panthers, raccoons, deer, and otter came to the river. They made their homes on the beautiful islands. A plentitude of orchids bloomed and turned the island trees into colorful cathedral windows. A plethora of lizards and anoles clamored over the orchids and 2,000 kinds of plants, including palms, vines, bushes, grasses, and trees. When all were in place, the Everglades was a living kaleidoscope of color and beauty. It glittered with orchids, grass, trees, birds, panthers, raccoons, snakes, mosquitoes, fish, all the things large and small that made the earth beautiful. The storyteller paused. The children looked around and pondered. The storyteller went on. When the Everglades was perfect, people who called themselves Calusas arrived. They lived great gracefully on the fish and game and made tools out of seashells. The Spanish conquistadors arrived and the Calusa people disappeared. The conquistadors were afraid of the flesh ripping grass and roaring animals of the Everglades and they moved on. North of Florida, European men pushed the Creek Indians out of the Carolinas some of them walked south until they came to the silvery, silvery Everglades. They pulled deep into the sawgrass and settled on the islands. They are the Seminole, which means runaway Indians. A few of them live here today. The storyteller paused. The children looked around. Where are the clouds of egrets? A child asked. The hunters shot them by the tens of thousands and sold the feathers to decorate women's hats. Only a few survived the slaughter. Where are the quantities of alligators? Another child asked. The hunters shot them by the acres and sold their gleaming hides to make wallets and shoes. Only a few remain. Where did the cathedral windows of orchids go? A third child asked. The orchid hunters picked gardens and gardens of them and sold them to put them on ladies' dresses. Practically none can be found. Another child looked around. And where did the mammals and snails and one-celled plants and animals go? They vanished when the engineers dug canals in the Everglades and drained the fresh water into the sea to make land. Farmers tilled the land, business people built towns and roads upon it. Pesticides and fertilizers flowed into the river waters and poisoned the one cell animals and plants. The snails died, the fish died, the mammals and birds died. But this is a sad story, said the fifth child. Please tell us a happy story. The storyteller picked up his pole and quietly skimmed the dugout canoe across the water and down a trail in the sawgrass. Then he sat down and told the children a new story. Five children and a storyteller pulled into the Everglades. Eventually, the children grew up and ran the earth. The clouds of birds returned to the abundance of fish in the water. The flowers tumbled into bloom. Quantities of alligators bellowed through the sawgrass again. A multitude of panthers, deer, raccoons, and otters cavorted on the islands. That's a much better story, said the children. Now pull us home quickly so we can grow up.
the end. Well, friends, I hope you enjoyed learning all about the Everglades with me. It truly is a fantastic place, and I hope we can all grow up to bring it back. Thanks so much for reading with me. Bye.